Hello, I'm Landon Schlangen, and today we are going to go through the arithmetic formatter on FreeCodeCamp. I went through Python for everybody by myself. It's pretty easy. They have uh, video players to explain everything to you. So I didn't think I would make a video on that. So I'm just going to move on to the Python projects. First one we have is the arithmetic formatter. Let's look into this and we can view the full project description and the starter code on REPL.it. So just follow this link and then it will show what the challenge is. Just reload if the ID is having trouble. So there we go, I have it open. Uh, first of all, we wanna look at the readme and we can click preview and it'll show us the markdown on this page. So your assignment is to make 235 plus 52 as a string become this. So it's formatted up and down vertically instead of horizontal. And we can also send it as an array and then it will become these four output like this inside the console. So kind of finicky because we have to like come up with all the spaces and come up with how long these dashes are going to be. And we have to check if it's a plus or a minus and make sure the everything's in the correct order and there's no special characters. So let's get started on this. First of all, I'm going to go into the main.py and make sure we have it. We're printing out an arithmetic arranger of these four expressions and also in here, we, we want to return, we want to turn this array, right, into, into a string that looks like this, where we have the numbers and the new line and then more numbers and the pluses and minuses, and then a new line and then the, the dashes. So yeah, we basically turn this into something, a weird looking string that in the console will look really nice. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna define some variables here. We'll go first, equals an empty string, second equals an empty string, we'll go lines equals an empty string, and we'll go sum x equals an empty string, and we'll also go string equals an empty string. And we'll say for problem in problems, so we're getting the problem list from problems, and we're gonna loop through them. We're gonna say if, I also want to import a package, I'm going to import re, which is the regular expression package for Python, and we're just gonna say, if re.search, and we're gonna search for values that aren't the space or white space, zero through nine dot plus or minus, and we're gonna search for them in the problem like so. And so if that happens, then we're going to return error numbers must only contain digits like that. And there's another check we have to do for like pluses and minuses because right now, we could pass in a multiplication or division. So I have to do another check with that. We'll do if re.search, and we're gonna search for a division on the problem, or re.search for the multiplication on the problem. Then we want to return error operator must be a plus or a minus. So that will handle those and oh, problems. And then after that, still inside this for loop, we can do first number equals problem dot split and we can split it by space and then grab the first part of that array then which will be the first number so that would be like 32 here and we can grab the operator that will be the second one so problem dot split from spaces and we'll grab the second one which would be index of one and then the second number will be index of two and we're getting this green squiggly line underneath because we're not using these values right now also with these ones so then now i want to check if length of the first number is greater than or equal to five or length of the second number is greater than or equal to five then we're going to return error numbers cannot have more than four digits so there we go next up we're going to do sum equals an empty string so lots of different variables with this we're going to say if operator equals a plus and we're going to do sum equals string and we're gonna have to parse our numbers. So we'll go int first number, and we're gonna add it to this into the second number, and then turn it into a string, and that will be the sum. And we're gonna say LF operator equals a minus sign, then kind of do the same thing, except subtract it. So let's say sum minus first number minus second number, like so. We also need a, another parameter up here, and that is the solve parameter. And it's an optional parameter, so we have to set a default for it. Its default will be false, but if someone passed in true to that value, then we would actually have to solve it like this right here. See, they have true here. 
and then we actually have to solve it as well. So that's why we have to add this stuff in. Next up, still inside this for loop, we're gonna say length equals max of our length of our first number compared to our second number, to the length of the second number. And we're gonna say top equals string of the first number dot r just outside of that dot r just and we're going to pass in the length bottom equals operator plus the string of the second number dot r just length minus one so yeah lots of tweaking to get the spacing right line equals an empty string we're going to say res equals string sum dot r just of the length and we're going to say for s in range length we want to add the dash marks so we're going to do line plus equals the dash and then outside of that for loop outside of this inner for loop still inside the outside for loop <laughs> a little confusing there if problem does not equal problems the minus one means last character in that problem so the last problem then we just want to say first plus equals top plus a space. Now I'll just copy this part. It's just so that we don't add spaces to the last problem. So like here, there won't be any spaces after 523. Otherwise, if we did it for this for all of them, then there would be spaces after 523. And then we're gonna say if solve, so if we are going to solve it, then our string is going to equal first plus backslash n for new line, plus second plus backslash n new line again plus lines plus backslash n plus the sum x and we're going to say else it's kind of the same thing as this except minus the sum x and the new line there and then we want to return the string at the end so we'll just do return string and we can get rid of this return arrange problems and yeah one other thing right at the start we have to check we have to check if the length of the problems is greater than five then there's too many problems so we're going to say if the length of problems is greater than five and we're going to say return error too many problems and there we go let's uh try running it and see what happens all right we got an error let's see what this error is line 19. i i forgot a angle bracket here okay now let's try it all right we had two failures and the rest passed it looks like let's see what the two failures were it's so hard to read this stuff so this one's test arrangement and this one's test solutions we can ch check the test module so this test arrangement one so i must be off a little bit with my spaces and stuff in range length okay that didn't help it seems like the error handling is good it's just the formatting of the string so like this doesn't equal this obviously because there's three dashes here and one dash here okay and i have to add a plus to the two to the length that's what i have to do so that it will add more dashes right here and it will make the top and bottom a little nicer so let's try running it now still failing we're not getting the dashes it looks like oh we are for this one oh maybe it's because this stuff has to be outside of the indentation so if I shift tab it over so that it's outside of the loop, then maybe it will work. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, we just have to make the solve part outside of the, the first for loop, which is the problems for loop. So yeah, Python's a little annoying with that, with the different indentations and stuff. But yeah, that was the problem. And now it ran the six tests and got it done. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I got a lot of help from the forum for this one so arithmetic formatter forum help so yeah i basically looked at what this guy was doing especially for the for getting the spaces right and stuff like that because i thought it was really annoying to try and do that on my own so <laughs> so yeah if you're stuck you can also look at this stuff and they actually helped him out with a part on this by doing this so yeah pretty cool there next up next up we have the time calculator which i did all by myself, no help from the forum, and uh, it was pretty fun. So that's what we have up next, and I will see you next time. See ya.